Hey, what is going on YouTube? Um, my name is Blue. We are on my Mistweaver Monk. Um, one of my, probably, this is an alt character, but is becoming my favorite character to play. I really like playing Mistweaver. Um, and I really like the play style of um, basically the legendary ancient teachings of the monastery. Up, you know, adding this legendary or equipping this legendary change kind of your play style as a monk. And I really, really like it. Um, this is going to be a guide of how I play my Mistweaver Monk. Maybe a little bit different from other guides that you have seen. Because, hey, as a new player, I have also watched those same guide videos. And now that I have more experience with the, the class, the spec, really devoting everything I can to making Ancient Teachings of the Monastery works, um, may have a different opinion than maybe other people that are just saying, hey, this is kind of the go-to thing to do, and then they're themselves are playing Venthyr Monk, which is basically 90% of the monks, I'm guessing, are playing Venthyr. Um, for me, personally, that's not a play style that I think I would enjoy. I've never played it before, um, but I really do like Ancient Teachings, and I'm going to stick with it. So, let's go ahead and talk about the Legendary. Ancient Teachings of the Monastery says, after casting Essence Font, your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick. So basically, your single target abilities, your three single target abilities, um, the damage that it does, whatever damage it is, let's say it crits, you take that damage and you multiply it by two and a half, and then you um, that value is given to a heal, to heal one person, right? Um, so that's, and that's a buff that you get after casting Essence Font for 15 seconds. Okay, now the idea here is basically a lot of your healing comes through your damage okay now when we go over stats it's very easy what do i do in my stats you just run whatever stats are going to increase your dps now the no-brainer here is intellect right i'm not going to make a video say hey run intellect we we always we all know intellect right we know that if one gear score has a higher than what you're wearing you equip it because it's got intellect eh, kind of a no-brainer right um now other stats to look at are versatility. Versatility is going to be a huge increase um, to your damaging spells and in return is going to increase the healing done of ancient teachings of the monastery. Very simple there. Now the nice thing too is um, stacking versatility. It's also going to increase the healing of your other spells that kind of really don't really relate to ancient teachings of the monastery. So it's not like they're going to fall behind because you are running so much verse. Um, but versatility, huge, 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 very important. Now, the other stat is Critical Strike. Critical Strike is very good because once those hits crit, then, like I said, if those hits hit at a certain, let's say, 1K value, it crits, you're at 2K value now, you're, it's going to take that 2K, it's going to multiply by another 2.5, and then it's going to heal somebody else. So the crits are also very important. Now, um, let's go over Mastery here. Because I do kind of want to show you something, how Mastery works. Mastery is really good. Um, because you are running Ancient Teaching of the Monastery, you're actually not really healing too much with your other spells. Now, I know that kind of sounds a little bit trollish, um, but it's, it's true. Um, I find that even in raid environments, I'm not really doing too much other of my healing spells. I'm not enveloping mists. You know, I'm not doing these things that a lot of monks usually do i'm relying more on ancient teachings of the monastery also i'm relying more on um i find this fun to do you may not want to do this but i actually run the blood set if you're unfamiliar with the blood set in raids is it actually damages but then it also heals from the damage it does now unlike all the other sets or unlike the holy set, you can actually manipulate the blood set by your stats, okay? So the blood set is a damage that goes out and comes back and heals. I can manipulate that damage by running more versatility and critical strike. So this is actually a set you can manipulate with your stats. Um, so that's gonna be a huge portion of your healing. You get that up and that's like 10% um, of your overall healing for free just because you're prioritizing your stats well and it's not even prioritizing your stats well it's stats that really work with the legendary you're running so anyhow um so i kind of rely more on that than i rely on hey you know essence fonts good but say hey renewing mists 
sure I'll renewing miss somebody, you know, but it's more going to be like, hey, I I see that I have an essence font proc on them. I'm going to renewing miss them mostly for the double gust proc. Okay, so that's kind of what we get into the gust. Um, now, what I do want to show you about the gusts, I would say this is probably our third best stat. I specifically, I'm trying to run only versatility and crit. Um, now, if gear allows it, I would love to do that, right? Um, but my idea of haste is just a dead stat completely. Um, versatility, on the other hand, is good. Now, I do want to show you something. So this is my ring. It's crit, verse, no intellect on it, just a lot of verse. I'm going to take this off. Now, I want to show, go back to mastery. So the value I get for mastery right now with 93% mastery, um, it says, hey, your gust of mist is going to do 1,040 damage. Now, if I equip this ring back on, huge amount of versatility. Um, my mastery now says, hey, it's doing 1,074. So I actually just increased my mastery, my gusts of mist, through increasing my versatility. So that's, it doesn't seem, I mean, you would think it wouldn't work like that, um, but actually running a crap ton of versatility is going to increase your mastery. Um, the healing of your mastery effect um, by a small mar margin, obviously not as much as if you'd run mastery, um, but it's really good. Uh, so to me, I try to run everything crit and versatility, and I do get away with some of the mastery because I am Kyrian, and Kyrian says, hey, when you weapons of order, it's going to increase your mastery by an additional 42%. Um, so for me, when I'm relying more on, you know, just if I stat myself correctly, like I talked about, I can rely more on my kicks and um, to kind of heal through all the dam all the healing that needs to be done. And then, hey, if there's an occasion that um, I could benefit by having a lot of mastery, I have a button for it. I don't need to waste stats f to go into mastery um, because I have a button for it. I got utility for that. Um, so why I am in the Curian Sanctum, I do kind of want to show you this because this is pretty good and it goes along with stats perfectly. You do want to run Clea. Um, right now I'm running Jade Bond. Um, you could probably switch Jade Bond or Rising Sun Revival for a raid. You obviously want to run Rising Sun Revival, but I am trying out Jade Bond for Mythic Plus because I don't really use uh, Revival very often. Um, but anyways, let's, let's talk about why I run Clea is Valiant Strikes, right? Valiant Strikes says, hey, you get a stack. Every time you crit worth, um, with your heal or DPS, um, you're going to gain a stack. Now, at the very bottom, it says, hey, for every stack that you have, you're going to get a small portion of Critical Strike. Um, at 20 stacks, you get 5%. This is really nice. In dungeon scenarios, you're actually going to keep this buff, uh, depending on how you're healing, right? You're going to keep this buff for a good amount of time. Um, sometime it is going to fall off to heal somebody, which is fine, um, but a 5% increase to your crit is great. Now we go down here and we also see Pointed Courage. It says chance to critically strike is increased by 2% for every nearby enemy or ally up to 6%. Um, in Raid Environment and Dungeon Plus, this is going to be a really, um, this is going to be the 6% is going to stay on you for a good amount of time. So, hey, you know, 5%, 6%, we got 11% just built in our kit of crit. This is amazing. Now, for raid, I would probably switch to Hope Springs Eternal um, to give you an extra defensive. Um, but for Mythic Plus, I do like Spear of the Archon. It says movement speed is increased by 6% while out of combat and gain 3% critical strike chance for 10 seconds after damaging an enemy above 90% health. So obviously in Raid, you're not going to get the, you know, this isn't going to happen as often as it will in Mythic Plus. Um, but this, again, is more critical strike for your stats. And like I said, if we're just running straight crit and versatility, this is just huge. We can't really do better than Clea. I've messed around with uh, Mechanicos, maybe for a DPS. But like I said, there's so much crit involved here with Clea. Um, that I actually think it's a DPS loss, or I find it to be a DPS loss for me um, moving away from Clea. So there's that. Now the last thing I probably want to talk about, and um, I'll probably make some videos going over more specific things as far as rotations, and I'll go a little bit into rotations actually, um, but we're going to go ahead and talk about talents. This is my Mythic Plus talent. Now if I want to go into Raid, all I'm changing is my Refreshing Jade Wind. Um, 
and then Mythic Plus and Voke of the Kiji. Now, you may want to run Diffuse Magic over Damp and Harm. This is... Um, this is up to you, okay? The reason I always go Dampen Harm and I never change it, um, one is I'm lazing, but I also have just a macro, a defensive macro, or, uh, you know, a, a shift macro, whatever you call it, <clears throat> for defensive ability. So basically, my main defensive ability is Fortifying Brew. That's always my go-to. That's a huge defensive cooldown, and especially with... Um, Whatever uh, fortifying ingredients, it gives you a shield on plot, uh, on top of this great defensive ability. That's always my go-to scenario. And then if I need a second defensive in case that one's down, then I go Dampen Harm. Um, so for me, I would rather have Dampen Harm because it always works versus Diffuse Magic only work in certain scenarios. And then I kind of have to plan it out, right? Um, so that's kind of how I do it. You may want to do it differently because Diffuse Magic in the specific scenarios that it is good is amazing. Uh, now, the main one I really want to talk about is Spirit of the Crane. Um, because a lot of monks, I think, are really dependent on mana. Um, hugely dependent on mana from, from the streams and the videos that I've seen. That's just what they need to do. And a lot of people will even opt for going um, mana tea to really assist them with that. Now, if you are running Ancient Teachings of the Monastery, you're going to go Spirit of the Crane. And I want to read Spirit of the Crane so people understand how this works. Because basically, if you run Spirit of the Crane, this is telling you how to do your DPS, your healing rotation. Okay, So it says, Teaching of the Monastery causes each additional blackout kick to restore 0.65% of mana. Now, the key here is a additional blackout kick um, so we actually find that wording in a passive on mistweaver section where it says teachings the monastery says tiger palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time stacking up to three times so that's it right there so pretty much your rotation is going to be you're going to essence font so you get the proc in raid, you want a full essence font. You want to get as much people, as many people as you can, um, hot it up. In Mythic Plus, you can just cast that sucker and then be done with it, right? Spam the next global. It's going to hit five people, and you're done with it, right? So we want to have this, and here's my indicator right here of the time. We want to have that rolling so we can DPS. Um, now the priority is going to be Rising Sun Kick. You want to hit that baby off cooldown because that's your biggest DPS ability. Um, so that kind of is the priority all the time. Now, other than that, you're going to go ahead and Tiger Palm until you get three stacks. Once that three stacks, you go ahead and dump those three stacks in a Blackout Kick. And that's basically going to ensure that you never go Oom ever. Now, the only time I kind of talked about in some situations that you may get close to being Oom or you may have to use your mana is situations where it's just like, okay, the whole entire team is taking damage at once okay uh, maybe i already popped my cooldowns because we did a big dangerous pull prior and we're going to go ahead and do a big dangerous pull again then maybe okay essence font you know um get some hots rolling with the it already jumped to somebody else with some renewing mist and then i'll go ahead and spam some um vivifies on the team to get them up and maybe that's going to use quite a bit of my mana blah 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 and then once that pulls over, you just go back into your rotation. And you're going to go ahead and get that mana back. And I actually did find this interesting. I was looking in a Heroic Sylvanas. I was like, oh, I wonder how my mana regen looked like on a Heroic Sylvanas fight, which is a relatively long fight. Um, I did end up regening throughout the fight a full mana bar, so 50,000 mana. Um, and I was like, dang, that's pretty impressive. So basically through that whole fight, I was I went into the fight with 100k mana. Um, and that's just proper use of irritation when you can do it, right? Um, but basically that's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I mean, basically, I just kind of want to get your opinions of avoiding haste or why you guys run haste why you guys think it's necessary yes it does you know get rising sun kick off cooldown faster it does get blackout kick off faster but remember if you don't want to be wasting your mana and you want to actually be able to be efficient with your mana and never have to drink in a dungeon you're not going to be blacking out kicking off cooldown right you're going to be getting your stacks up
I mean, so other than that, I really don't see why haste is valued because all those haste stats you could just put into making this kick hit harder, heal harder, you know, instead of reducing the cooldown by like one second, right? Um, that's it, everyone. I'm really curious what you think. If you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. Um, subscribe. Let me know you guys want more content. I can go ahead and put some dungeon videos through. I would actually enjoy that if you're curious about how I run my dungeons, you know, really relying on ancient teachings in the monastery. Um, but that's it. Take it easy. Peace.